Hi folks, and welcome to this story time and prologue to a new campaign that we'll be running for Say Hi Paul channel members. It's between the Night Lords and the Eldar of Craftworld Ulthway. Uh, this is the first chapter, uh, the, the subtitle of which is The Ship. Uh, if you are interested in um, in seeing this campaign, uh, check out the link to channel memberships below. Level 2 channel members are the ones who will uh, have access to this. Uh, anyway, uh, even if you're not interested in the battle report, here's a little bit of, uh, of narrative prologue from my, my crazy brain. I hope you enjoy. The Aldari vessel, known as the Radiant Embrace, fired another salvo. Its launch batteries struck one of the larger asteroids in an elegant Petals of Annihilation pattern and the body of rock and ice blew apart into fragments. The sleek black vessel had been sent to this area of space by the craft world Althway in order to destroy an asteroid field. The Seer Council of their race have foreseen in the skeins of the future that the presence of this asteroid field will deter the ancient foe from physically travelling through this sector of space, which would bring them into the path of the forces of Althwe and draw the craft world into an unnecessary and costly conflict. Each such conflict that the craft world became involved in cost them more lives at a rate faster than their birth rate. In other words, each conflict of this sort slowly killed the craft world, and as such they were to be avoided by manipulating the future to maximise their longevity. The farseers of their seer council have the weight of their craft world, on their shoulders. The strike cruiser of the 53rd Talon Night Lords, known as the Dead of Night, swam through the tides of the Immaterium. Its Geller fields encased it in a bubble of real space, protecting it from the chaos without. The bridge doors opened, and Vinkov, the Talon champion, strode inside. The warriors of the Atramenta immediately, though imperceptibly, went into battle alert and scanned Vinkov for any signs of threat to their master. Narivok Mugaris, Talon Master, sat on a command throne and turned his head quizzically towards the newcomer. I told you to prepare all claws and be prepared for immediate launch, he said with an unsubtle and threatening tone to his voice. You did and that was three days ago. How long do you expect us to stay at battle readiness? <sighs> Stand the claws down. Clearly we are not as close to our quarry as Keth has led me believe. I know why you tolerate his corruption. We need a navigator to steer the dead of night through the Immaterium. But why would you take his counsel? The Atramenta immediately triggered the battle stims in their Terminator plate in order to intercept Vinkov before he could reach striking distance of their lord. It was an unnecessary and precautionary action. Magaris' ex expression remained impassive. Because he has the Night Haunter's curse and he has foreseen the location of our quarry. Was there anything else? Vinkov's reply never came as the translation alarm sounded and the vessel shook as it was dragged shuddering back into real space. Moments later, when the ship's sensor had been calibrated for real space, several Xenos vessels were identified on the Oculus. You know my orders! yelled Morgaris to everyone present. Vinkov left the bridge and headed straight for the embarkation deck. As soon as the targeting solution was achieved on the larger Xenos vessel, Morgaris gave a single order. FIRE! The command hub of the Radiant Embrace was a buzz of activity. Although 
to a monkey it would have seemed quiet and sullen. A group of farseers with a coterie of warlocks stood casting runes into the air and directing gunnery control of which asteroids to destroy in which order. This was a very precise task they were about and each asteroid destroyed altered the fate of the others and the skeins of the future must be constantly mapped if they were to achieve their goal. Then, all of a sudden, they each experienced what was a rare and unusual sensation for an Eldari seer. Surprise. Surprise not only at the sudden appearance of the monkey vessel, but of the inbound ordnance and energy fire. They knew, even without reading the fates, that the radiant embrace was too large to avoid the fire completely. They had been taken by surprise. By Monkey standards, the radiant embrace was sleek and manoeuvrable, but not by Eldari. It would, however, be able to withstand this bombardment and come about and engage in void war. No orders needed to be given. The crew were all experts of their path and knew instinctively what action to take. When the fire connected, the vessel was rocked by explosions and detonations alike, and the crew began to take corrective action. Except, they didn't. The impact had caused a freak energy surge to pulse through the wraithbone core of the radiant embrace, culminating in a massive implosion in the systems that control the vessel's webway gate. It was not uncommon for Aldari vessels of this size to be directly connected to the webway, but here and now this connection was hideously distorted and malfunctions ripped through multiple ship systems, many of which were never intended to interact with each other, and time began to slow. Grass began to spring from under the feet of the crew, ancient ruins from some far off place, and structures only normally seen inside the webway began to appear merged within the ship and its deck. As time stopped in the control hub, the crew lost control of their vessel, and with the continuing bombardment of the Monkey, the radiant embrace started to plummet into the atmosphere of the nearest moon. The Aldari escort craft scattered and quickly took refuge on the far side of the moon to which the radiant embrace was falling. There was no need for the seers on board to start casting runes, though they did so anyway. The scanners made the intent of the Monkey obvious. They were launching a landing craft. In order to protect their kin and recover their stricken vessel, they would need to rapidly, rapidly mobilise their forces onto the surface in order to intercept.